coffee. The single greatest delivery method for the most consumed drug on the planet, caffeine. Whether you order an iced skinny hazelnut macchiato sugar-free light ice snow whip or just black, starting the day with a cup of coffee goes beyond ritual, beyond even habit, to the fundamental fabric of our society. And starting the day without one is practically unthinkable. This is the uncommon history of coffee. Ethiopia was the birthplace not only of the human species, but also the coffee plant. In the mountainous region of Kaffa, where the coffee plant grows wild, the story goes a goat herder named Kaldi noticed his goats eat some bright red beans. Then they started dancing. Kaldi ate the beans and also started dancing. Taking his discovery to the Sufi monastery, the monks brewed the beans, drank the mixture, and stayed up all night having mystical visions. And were probably dancing. This story of the first caffeine addicts tells of how the plant's effects became popular. So popular that the Oromo people would even crush up the leaves and beans and mix them with fat to make caffeinated energy bars. Coffee made its way to Yemen sometime in the 15th century, arriving in the port city of Mocha. The most popular species of coffee bean was born here, Coffea arabica, as were the earliest records of coffee being roasted and brewed. The drink, called kawa, was most likely where we get the name coffee. Muslim religion forbids drinking alcohol, so this stimulating and non-alcoholic drink was perfect. Cafes sprung up all over the Middle East. A public, secular space where men could engage in lively conversation, talking about business, politics, or religion. Naturally, gatherings of alert people having intellectual discussions about politics and religion was the last thing a ruler would want so the Ottoman emperor outlawed coffee drinking. Those caught brewing or drinking it were beaten on a first offense. The second offense was punished by being sewn into a bag and thrown into the Bosphorus. Coffee drinking continued in secret, while coffee trading took off, spreading the new drink across Europe, where it was greeted with excitement, but also suspicion. Surely a drink that could make you alert and addicted was the work of the devil. It also didn't help that coffee had originated in the Muslim world. The Catholic Church came under public pressure to ban the new drink, but Pope Clement VIII elected to try it first. And with the Pope officially blessing the beverage, coffee houses began to spring up all across Europe. Since drinking Europe's polluted water was the easiest way to the morgue, every man, woman, and child drank beer. So when merchants introduced a new beverage that was just as safe but prompted feelings of alertness instead of alcohol sluggishness, it took off. In England, cafe culture exploded. The first cafe opened in London in 1652, and in less than a decade, there were more than a hundred. Newly sober and energized men packed the new coffee houses, where they engaged in lively conversation called Penny Universities because for the price of a coffee, you could listen to the world's most intelligent people as they discussed trade, politics, science, or religion. A nervous King Charles II tried to ban coffee in 1675, but relented just before his ban was supposed to take effect. By the 18th century, London had more coffee houses than anywhere else in the world except for Constantinople. And the cafe culture led to big business, literally. The stock exchange, insurance, and the auction industry all came out of London coffee houses. Protesting British taxes, the Boston Tea Party dumped not only tea into the harbor, but the idea of tea. The anti-British sentiment led to coffee becoming the morning beverage of choice in the fledgling country of America. During the Civil War, coffee served as an unofficial secret weapon for the Union troops. General Benjamin Butler planned his attacks around when his men would be the most wired from their morning coffee. Some Union soldiers were issued special rifles with a hand crank grinder built right into the stock. The soldier would fill the hollow space with beans and then grind to make coffee whenever and wherever needed. Confederate soldiers, lacking the same access to coffee as their northern counterparts, were forced to make their hot drinks out of potatoes instead. During the First World War, coffee took a leap forward, or backward, depending on your opinion. Instant coffee was marketed by George Washington, was mass-produced, and sent to the boys at the front. Affectionately nicknamed a cup of George, it provided a convenient way to keep up morale in the trenches. 
But with coffee imports cut off for the Germans, they had to get creative with their coffee, including grinding up fruit pits and walnut shells. This garbage coffee was so bad that the German War Committee had to issue a notice preventing it. It wasn't just the Americans who wanted their coffee faster. The Italians have put a signature spin on coffee, which all started with a different brewing method called espresso. Forcing almost boiling water through very fine coffee grounds at a high pressure created a great tasting coffee that had an extra benefit. It was fast. At the start of the 20th century, a brewed coffee would take up to five minutes. Espresso cut that down to around 30 seconds and would produce a much more consistent brew every time. No matter where you are in the world, people order their coffee in Italian. Espresso, cappuccino, macchiato, even Americano. Not frappuccino, though. That's not really a word. But the world's most expensive coffee is made from recycled materials. Dismayed that 91% of the coffee consumed in England was instant, Tony Wilde, as the coffee director for Tailors of Harrogate, set out to introduce the West to exotic coffees from around the world. What he found was Kopi Lua, an Indonesian coffee made from the dung of the civet, a local animal resembling a cross between a cat and a raccoon. Civets eat the coffee cherries, and their digestive enzymes break down the bean in unique ways. Just pick the beans out of their poop, wash them off, and delicious coffee is yours. This rare blend can go for up to $100 per cup. But as the popularity of the brew grew, the living conditions of the civets plummeted, and the craze has fallen out of favor. No matter where you are in the world, those ancient beans that got the goats dancing are brewed every morning, in a perk, a drip, or an espresso machine, at home, or served by a barista. With two and a quarter billion cups of coffee served each day, from a humble cup of joe to a, let's face it, slightly pretentious venti pumpkin spice frappuccino, the world runs on coffee. <laughs>